everybody, welcome to episode 30 of the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from New Brunswick, Canada. Today is Tuesday, May the 29th, 2018. I would first like to start the podcast by welcoming any returning viewers to the podcast. Welcome back. And to any new viewers who may be tuning in for the very first time, welcome. This is a podcast primarily about my knitting adventures, and there's some crochet and sewing, and hopefully this summer there's going to be some spinning and all sorts of fibery fun. So if that is your jam, then this is the podcast for you. Um, so yeah, um, do subscribe and like the podcast. Uh, liking the podcast will uh, get the podcast out there in the YouTube community a little bit more. So if you do that, I very much appreciate it. And um, yes, so where can you find me? You can find me on uh, Rivalry as X Country Girl 1986X. And you can find me on Instagram as Inspired Knitting Podcast. And you can also find a Ravelry group for the podcast as well as Inspired Knitting Podcast. So I have uh, the show notes there with everything I talk about. And you can find direct links to the patterns and yeah, lots of fun. There is a page where you can introduce yourself. Um, there's also a thread to uh, share what you're currently working on. And we also have a giveaway, uh, which I will talk about in administration. So yeah, there's lots going on over there. So do check it out. Uh, if you wish, wish to reach out to me, uh, the best place to do that is Ravelry because I usually check Ravelry at least once a day. Um, but if you wish to email me, you can do at sweetcomfortdesigns at gmail.com. All this stuff will be listed in the description box below as well. So, um, yeah, do check it out. So... I'm going to uh, do a little bit of chit chat first and then I'll move on into administration and everything I have to share with you and it's quite a bit this week. So yes, I didn't do a podcast last week. Um, technically I did film a podcast, but um, it didn't turn out so well. I didn't enjoy it at all. I had decided, I believe it was Monday. Um, Sunday was way too busy to record. So Monday I went outside and it was a really, it was a beautiful sunny day, but uh, it was windy again. Something I realized living out here in Northumberland County is that, uh, or sorry, Westmoreland County. I don't know where that other one come from. Westmoreland County is that we have the Tanta, uh, Tantamar Marsh um, just to the west of us. So um, it gets quite gusty and windy out here. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not complaining. It's beautiful country out here. I love it. But it was rather gusty and windy. And also, I was filming around 5 o'clock in the evening. So there was a ton of black flies. And it was just miserable. I was swatting them away. And they were climbing all over, like the camera. And all. it was a disaster. I just kept trudging through it. But um, after I watched it back, it was like, no, I don't think they're going to enjoy this. So I just scrapped the video and decided that I was going to wait to this week to, just to share what I was working on. I'd have more. So that's what I decided to do. Um, last week seemed to fly by really, really fast. I didn't feel like I got too much done anyways. So yeah. <laughs> so what's been going on? Um, it's been pretty quiet here. Um, I unfortunately lost my uh, partner in crime. Uh, Keely uh, was staying with us for a while and uh, she went back to work. So she's not living here anymore, which is a little sad because, um, yeah, she's lots of fun to be around. So that's kind of sad. So if you're watching Bug, 
family. I miss you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy for her. She's gone back and um, she's happy to be there. So I'm happy for her. Um, but I miss her still. <laughs> so that's going on. And yeah, I don't know. It's been pretty quiet. Like I said, um, it's been a little harder to sit outside. I've realized, um, just because down here in New Brunswick, we have black flies and, um, living in Ontario where I grew up, I never saw black flies before. Um, it wasn't really a woodsy area where I lived. I lived in a town uh, that was between two major highways. So we didn't really have a ton of uh, woody areas around us. So maybe that's why, but as soon as I moved down here to New Brunswick, I quickly realized what these little things are and they are just awful. I hate mosquitoes and I think that these black flies are worse than mosquitoes. So it's a little hard to sit outside sometimes because uh, yeah, they come in swarms and when they start swarming you, they bite and oh my gosh, it's just horrible. So as the summer days come upon us and it gets a little bit more uh, warmer and the sun comes out bright and hot and the wind is also a deterrent as well. But yeah, they seem to dissipate and disappear. So I hope the sun gets hotter very soon and gets rid of them because I want to go back outside. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, um, we are planning a trip for this weekend, so I am super, super excited for this. I cannot wait. Um, my boyfriend and I have been planning for a couple months now about going to Prince Edward Island. Uh, we have both been before, and it's beautiful, but we would like to go back just for a summer trip. Uh, we were going to go to Ontario for the May 2-4 long weekend, but it wasn't really in the cards for us. So uh, we decided we were gonna go to PI instead. It didn't really work out for the May 2 for a long weekend because uh, there was other plans made. Um, so we decided that this weekend would be perfect. So um, there is there is couple a couple yarn shops that are in P Prince Edward Island. Uh, once you come into the island, there is actually one. Um, I messaged, uh, the owner and I asked if it was wheelchair accessible because if you were to look on Google, um, it just didn't look like it was. And unfortunately it's not, it is an 1880s farmhouse that's been converted into a yarn store. So unfortunately I cannot visit that one. However, um, in Kensington, uh, PEI, um, it's more towards the West Coast, but not too far. Uh, there is the Trailside Yarn Shop, and that one does definitely look like it's wheelchair accessible. So um, we are going to hit there first. We're going to leave here bright and early, and it's going to take approximately 55 minutes uh, from our driveway to the yarn shop. And then from there, we're going to go another 45 minute drive. We're going to be heading back eastward in the island to Charlottetown. And there is, um, I think it's called Great Quality Hobbies. And that's actually a model store uh, because my boyfriend is into scale model cars and they sell them. They're supposed to be like the best uh, in the maritime. So um, he's been wanting, my boyfriend's really been wanting to check them out. So um, he's gonna go there and there's a Michaels in Charlottetown. So um, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna have a fun Saturday. We're gonna have a nice road trip and we're each gonna be able to uh, get some um, shopping done for our, our hobbies and it's going to be so much fun. I cannot tell you how happy and grateful I am to have a boyfriend that is, is into crafting and hobbies. Like he does the models and it's great because we seem to have this understanding for each other that I don't care if he buys models. He don't care if I buy yarn. We buy models or yarn for each other 
and it, it's just awesome to have that because so many times um your spouses don't exactly like you buying that spending your money on that stuff or spending time on that hobby and we definitely do not have that problem at all so it's really awesome and it's really cool so i'm very very lucky to have him um so yeah it's going to be fun we're going to do that grab a bite to eat and probably head back at that point i'm not sure we might get into other trouble, but I don't know. I'm going to try to um, take some vlogs, perhaps. Maybe that's something you're interested in. I'm definitely going to be taking pictures, but um, I might try to get a vlog a little bit of the trip or definitely in the yarn store itself. Uh, from what I can see online, it looks like it's a great uh, yarn shop. So I will probably do that. If I do, um, I might either insert the videos or pictures into the next podcast or um, maybe make a separate video if it's too long. So we'll see how that goes, but I will try to take some footage of it so you guys can see what we did. So yeah, um, let me see here. So I think that's pretty much it for chatter. I don't want to bore you guys too, too much. Um, I'm going to jump now into administration. And um, last week in the podcast, I announced that I was going to be doing a random pattern giveaway. So it had been a while since I had um, announced one. So I thought I would throw one out there. So for this one, I decided to open a Ravelry thread and all you have to do is head on over to my Ravelry group and join the group and enter into the thread. So the pattern that you're going to win is the Chrissy Shawl by Cozy Up Designs. Um, I really, really love this pattern. It's a crescent shaped shawl and it's a two color DK weight uh, shawl. And it can also be done in fingering. So all you have to do to enter in for this gorgeous pattern is tell me what yarn or colorways that you would use to create this beautiful shawl. That's all you got to do. And I will announce a winner. Um, I think I said I would run it until like the 2nd of June if I remember correctly. So by probably the next podcast, I will uh, announce, draw for the winners and announce the winners here on the podcast. So make sure you head on over there and check it out. Um, and you could win this pattern. To make it even sweeter, and I thought this was really generous and really amazing. I really didn't expect this. Um, Jamie from the Cozy Up uh with the Stitch and Sisters, she is going to um, donate the pattern. So that is extremely amazing. Thank you so, so much, Jamie. It was really nice of you. So um, yeah, the pattern is going to be donated by Jamie. So um, once I draw for the winner, um, just uh, I will send you a message on Ravelry to let you know that you won, just in case you don't see it on the podcast. And um, all you'll have to do is get in contact with Jamie, and she will send you the pattern. So, yay! Um, if you do not know uh, Jamie or Cozy Up uh, Designs, they have a podcast here on YouTube, Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters. So do head on over and check them out because they are simply a joy to watch and they are coming out with some amazing designs. So do head on over there and send them some love. Okay, so let me see pretty much it for administration news for now so I'm gonna move on into the fun stuff and what you're here for and that is the knitting so I have quite a bit to show you guys now the first thing I'm going to share with you is uh, some market stuff so I said that there was going to be quite a bit of market stuff coming up so yeah one of the things that I have decided um, I want to do is dish claws. Um, I was told that dish claws are usually a big seller 
and I don't quite know what to make for a market. This is my first market and uh, it's summer. And I'm sure that people might buy stuff for the winter or Christmas or what have you. So I'm going to have a mix lot of stuff, but uh, I figured dishcloths were um, probably a good idea. And I was told that they sell out pretty fast. So I have been making these like a mad woman. <laughs> and so, yeah. I have quite a bit to share with you. So um, most of these dishcloths are all the same. So the pattern I'm using is Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth. And it is a pattern by PJ Allen. You can find it on Ravelry. It is a free pattern. And it has two versions to it. So you can do the version where you have the yarn overs that go um, down the side of the border. Or you can do what I'm doing without the holes. I just like it without the holes. So here's the first one I did. It's a pretty um, seafoam green color. These are all Burnett Handicraft or Cotton. So I do not have the colorway names. I didn't really bother to save the tags. So here's another one. It's in uh, some pretty stripy greens. I really love this one. And we have a purple one. And this one's kind of like a peachy color. And a green one. A blue one. I really like that one too. And this one. I think this one's called Country Stripes. And then I have this one here. This one is not Burnett. This is actually um, Premier Yarns. Uh, it's called their Home Cotton. Um, I do not know if this is a new brand. Uh, I know Premier is not a new uh, company, but I mean the brand of yarn. I'm not that familiar with Premier Yarns, and I've personally never seen this brand of cotton before, but I really, really like it. It's kind of got that... Um, I don't want to say marled because it's not really marled, but I just really like the way the colors, um, are look that how it works up and it looks. And, um, I found that it works up a little bit nicer than the brunette. Like it feels a little, um, nicer and it's a little bit easier to knit. It's not so hard. So I really, really love this stuff. So that's the only difference between them all. And then, okay, so before I go on, um, because these are started at the tip and you're increasing to the center point and then you're decreasing down the other side, um, I'm not quite sure what the pattern says um, to increase to, I can't remember. For all these dishcloths, I'm increasing to 45 stitches I knit three plain rows and then I start my decreases down the other side. So that's just the formula I'm using for that in case you were wondering. And then I have, I don't quite use um, all the yarn in the cotton um, to do these. So I end up with like these little balls. I haven't weighed them out to see how much I have left, but I just keep putting them in my little yarn bowl for now. And, um, I decided that I would take them and then just make like some scrappy ones. So yeah, these ones I'm increasing up to 30, 30 or 32 stitches doing three plain rows and then decreasing. So this one, I just got the pretty green and the blue. And then this one here, I just got the, the green and the peach. So I'm just starting off with the ball that I feel has a little bit less yarn and then I work it so far and then I start fading in the second color until say the green runs out and then I finish it. So yeah, just making some mini little mini ones. These can maybe be scrubby ones or I don't know. We'll see. So there's that. Um, I got a bunch more cotton um, 
on Sunday. Uh, we went to Michael's and they had some more. So I grabbed um, some more Burnett and I definitely grabbed more of the Premier yarn uh, in some of their different colorways. So there was like a beautiful blue, which is kind of more on the tealy side. And there's a, I don't know how to describe it. It's not black, but it's charcoal maybe. I don't know. It's it's really pretty. Uh, maybe more on the blue side. And then there's a green one and I got another, I think I got another pink one and a maroon colored one and a purple one. <laughs> I, I pretty much grabbed all the colors. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to share those with you guys today just because I feel the podcast is going to be more on the long side, but you will probably see them knit up and dish claws soon anyways. So yeah. So the next thing I have to share with you is another finished object. So um, I had shared on the, I don't know if it was the last episode, but at least the last two episodes, I used a new to me yarn, which was um, Loops and Threads Abbey, which you can find at Michael's. So uh, Abbey yarn is 100% a hundred percent, no, I don't know what the percentage is. It's an acrylic nylon blend. So um, it feels super, super soft. And I really loved working with it. So I had bought a couple more of the colorways. Now I was going to make just hats with them. But um, I had picked out a ball of it. And I was like, I don't really want to knit a hat. Uh, so what could I do? So I decided that I was going to knit some shorty socks uh, for the market. So here's what I came up with. So I think the colorway is uh, Pony. Phony? I can't remember now. But uh, super pretty. So all I did for this is uh, because it is like a worsted weight yarn, I cast it on... 44 stitches I believe so I have a Ravelry page for this so uh, I believe I cast it on like 44 stitches on a three point um, a 2.75 millimeter I did originally cast on with a 325 and I felt that it was turning out way too big so a 2.75 millimeter 44 stitches and I just did a little bit of uh, two by two ribbing and then I did a couple rows here, did uh, Eye of Partridge Heel flap and gusset and then did the toe from the Smooth Operator Socks Pattern by Susan B. Anderson for the toe and I think it turned out great. So there is two of them. I love them. So I figured that um, since these worked up so well that I might actually take my, I think I have three more balls of this yarn, different colorways. So I might actually um, just knit them all up into socks instead. So yeah, they feel really, really nice and they do have some nylon in them. So yeah, there we go. Really nice really really like it so um I think these balls have like 218 yards of yarn in it and I ended up with two little balls like that left I didn't again put them on the scale to measure it out but I might get around to doing that and put that information on my Ravelry page I am very sorry that I suck so much at that guys I am very bad for um not measuring things out and giving a proper amount of yardage but you can definitely get an adult size pair of socks out of that so yeah love those so there's that and just looking at my show notes here okay so i'm gonna do another uh half finished object so I got a hoe and I am so happy with it. I finished one of my Rita socks. 
So this is a pattern by Danielle George of the Little Bobbins podcast. And this is part of her Vintage Love Story collection. So yeah, I talked about this on my last podcast, but I would just go over it again quickly. I cast it on with a 2.0 millimeter needle and I cast it on 64 stitches and did a two by two rib, which she calls for a one by one twisted rib, maybe, I think it is, I believe. And um, this is modified because I casted this on and I it was turning out way too big. So instead of ripping the whole thing out, I only ripped back to the cuff and then I did a decrease round down to 56 stitches and the rest of the sock. So yeah, so I did cast on for the second sock and I did the same thing. So that's the only thing that's different. But yeah, I really, really love them. As you can see, it's this beautiful lace diamond texture. It's got an eye of partridge heel and gusset. And the toe, I actually did uh, the smooth operator sock uh, toe from Susan B. Anderson. I really, really love it. So I just decided to go with that one. Uh, Danielle has a, t a different toe in her pattern. So yeah. But anyways, here is my first half of my Rita sock. I'm really enjoying them. They are super pretty. Uh, the yarn that I'm using for this is um, Morning Mist, uh, which is a color colorway uh, from Allison Barnes. Uh, I got this in the April Fiberfix collection box. So I don't know if this is a special colorway that you can only get with the collection or she actually has this one in her shop. I'm not 100% certain but it is really, really nice. I love it. So it's blowing out a little bit, of course, but that is more true to color there. It's really pretty. I love it. So there's that one. The next thing I have finished, and it might be a little hard to show you guys, but I'm going to try. Um, Kaylee had bought some Burnett Baby Blanket yarn. So it's that really thick, uh, chunky stuff that kind of feels like a bathrobe. <laughs> it's kind of got that feel to it. It's really, really nice and soft, but um, she found that it's a little hard to work with. And it is. It can be a little hard to work with. Um, but she had bought an, a whole ball of cream and then she had, an, I think it came in a cake form. I can't remember who it was by, but um, it had some like white and um, some brown and some pink in it. So she she did make, I think, a bag out of that one, but she had like a lot left over. So she's like, can you do something with this? So I was like, okay. So I went on to um, the crochet crowd to Mikey because I know Mikey has a ton of um, wonderful patterns and videos for crochet. So I went on there and looking for some patterns in this yarn and he has, um, I don't remember the name of the pattern, but I will be sure to put it in the description box below. It's something like a granny square blanket, but not quite. There's like a single crochet chain row in between. So anyways, um, it's, it's a super fast project. It, literally only takes a couple hours to knit this up and you have a beautiful baby blanket. So I'm going to back up here and try to share it with you. So here it is. I just did a little flower to use up some of the yarn, but here it is. It is super pretty and it is rather cozy. It is really nice. I love it. So this was, I started off in the center with the ball of cream right there. And then here's the second color. And I just used it until it ran out. 
and then I went back to this cream color to finish off. So yeah, it took me maybe three, three and a half hours to finish it. So like I said, it's super fast. I used um, an 11 millimeter crochet hook to do it. And I also added in some picos or modified picos <laughs> for the edging. So yeah, it turned out really nice and it is rather warm. Um, I took it outside to take some pictures, which I forgot to even upload <laughs> to Instagram, but I went outside to take some pictures and although it was a sunny, beautiful day, it was still windy and cool. And I had this over my lap and it was really warm. So I love it. It's nice. Do I want to crochet another one right now? No. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. It is a nice pattern, though. So, anyways, there it is. Just a simple baby blanket, and it's going to be for market. So, I'm glad that uh, I was able to use the yarn, and, yeah, in the process, we made something for market. So, that's good. So, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what the colorway names are um, at all. And like I said, I don't even know what the pink one is, so I'm not sure. But anyway, there's that one. So, okay. That is it for finished objects. So now I'm going to move on into works in progress. So the first thing I have to share with you is actually a new cast on. And I have it in my super cute koala bag by Erin from Gimme Yarn 418. So I had started this uh, shawl back in December or January. I can't remember. Uh, it is the Sonder Shawl by Helen Stewart. And originally I had seen uh, Tracy from the Grocery Girls uh, podcast. She had uh, casted one of these on in um, a chunky weight yarn, which is what the pattern calls for. And I fell in love with it. I just thought it looked so cozy and so beautiful. I just had to have one. So I had some Lion Bran um, Thick and Quick. So I decided to cast it on. And I started the pattern, totally loved it, uh, like the pattern, but I wasn't really enjoying the yarn. Now, I do like thick and quick, but um, I just <laughs> I, I just didn't like the way that it felt. I was using slightly larger needles, so it wouldn't be so dense, but I, I just wasn't liking the fabric I was getting. So I had set it aside and... I didn't really want to frog it, but I just set it aside for a while to figure out what I wanted to do with it. So um, uh, earlier this month, sorry, the video kind of cut out there. Um, earlier this month, we went to Michael's and I picked up some um, Lion Brand Heartland yarn, which is a worsted. And I decided that I was going to cast the shawl on again but using a worsted weight instead, just because I think it makes it feel a little lighter and I don't know, I just prefer it. So anyways, I'll show you what I've done so far. I've gotten pretty far. So it starts off here at the tip and it just works up like this. And that's what I have so far. So it is a super easy pattern and it's really, really beautiful. So you can kind of get a better idea for the patterning there. It is so pretty, guys. And it is really easy to knit. I think it's like maybe a six row repeat. And yeah, it is just so nice. It is mindless and oh my gosh, I'm enjoying this. Um, I am now officially at the 60% mark. Something I love about Helen Stewart, um, 
I don't know if I've knit any of her patterns before. I really don't remember, but um, I do really love her, the way that she writes her patterns up. Um, even though it's a six row repeat, she literally has all the rows. So row for row, it goes right through. There's like 12 pages to the pattern. And it's really cool because um, she'll mark at the end of every row um, how many stitches that you should have because as you're knitting along, you're increasing. And she has the number of stitches um, that you should have. And also she has a check mark along the way as to the percentage that you just knit. So I'm officially at the 60% mark and I'm happy about that. And yeah, I really love her patterns and she is a wonderful designer. I definitely want to knit more of her stuff. So yeah love this. I have um, two balls of this yarn. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I kind of think that it will be. So before I show you the yarn, for this pattern I am using a US 9, which is a 5... sorry I'm half blind guys... 5.5 millimeter needle. And these are my Knitter's Pride Zings. So I'm using that. And like I said, this is a worsted weight yarn. So here's what I have left of the first cake. So this is Lion Brand Heartland in the Badlands colorway, which is a beautiful uh, wine color. So like a maroon color. I love it. I have had my eyes on this colorway for so long, but the problem is <laughs> Michael's has this colorway on the very top shelf. And although I always go to Michael's with somebody there, either my boyfriend or Kaylee, um, I've never had them with me at the time, like in the store, because we kind of all go off in our own direction to do whatever we like, get whatever we want. And I've never had somebody actually with me in the aisle to say, can you reach that for me? So I am so happy uh, when we got this, uh, my boyfriend was actually with me and I was like, okay, he's like, what do you want? I'm like, I want that color. <laughs> I need that color. So I am so happy. I would have to say that this is one of my favorite color ways. Y'all know how I feel about Lion Brand Heartland. I love it. It's a beautiful, it's 100% acrylic yarn, but it's really nice and it's really soft. And they have some beautiful colorways. They're more on the deeper side. Like they don't really have any. They do have some light colors. But uh, yeah. They're more neutrals. Or more on the darker side. But although they have a lot of beautiful colors. This one is definitely my favorite. So I'm glad. So this is what I have left of the first cake. And I still have one more skein of it. So I'm hoping it's going to be enough to finish. But considering that I'm at 60% now, I think it will be. So I'm going to look at the schematic and see how long it's supposed to be because I am using a worsted weight, not a chunky. So I want to make sure that it's going to be um, the proper size, but I really love this. I'm glad that I decided to cast on with the worsted. So when it's done, it's going to have like the, the flat edge here. But there's also a really beautiful tassel on this end. There might be three tassels on it. I can't remember. But I know there's definitely a tassel on it. So I am definitely going to do the tassel as well if I have enough yarn because it's pretty. So yeah, I can't stop gushing over this, guys, because I love it so much. So here it is one more time. This is the Saunders Shawl by Helen Stewart which is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and totally worth it. So there is that one. This has gotten a lot of work done on it in the last couple weeks. Um, I think I could have gotten a lot more done on it, but um, this is kind of my um, first thing in the morning knitting. <laughs> so um, I get up pretty much um, 
three days out of the week or four days out of the week, my boyfriend uh, goes off to help a friend uh, in town. So um, we're getting up at like five o'clock in the morning so he can be there for um, eight o'clock. So yeah, because it's like a, it's 45 minute drive from where we live into Moncton. And um, he stops and has uh, his breakfast and a coffee first, uh, or a tea first. He can't drink coffee. Uh, he has a tea first, and then he goes on to work. So usually when I get up, um, unless it's in the winter and I'm, like, cold, <laughs> go back to bed. But um, I've been staying up. So I grab a tea, I put my podcasts on, and I grab knitting. So because it's so early in the morning, it kind of needs to be something mindless. So this is what I've been grabbing lately. So I usually go through um, a page of uh, rows, and then I just set it aside and grab the next thing that I'm going to be knitting on that needs to be knitted on. So I probably could have had this finished, but it's kind of just been my grab project in the morning. So it doesn't matter. It, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So yeah. So there's that one. The next thing I have is another new cast on. So I was going through um, some of my yarn and um, this is for market. I had a ball of Knit Picks uh, City Tweed, and it's, uh, I think it's an Iran, if I remember. So it's this beautiful green color with these goldy uh, beige specks in it. So I wanted to uh, knit a hat with this. So because it's got tweed in it, I, I didn't really want to do something plain, but I wanted there to be a bit of interest. So I decided to go for um, the Beloved by... Okay, I'm not going to say her name. If I remember, I'm going to put it here, or you can find it below, because I am going to butcher it really, really bad. But it is a free pattern on Rivalry. Rivalry. It's called Beloved. And it is a beautiful seed stitch hat. So I cast it on for the adult size. And I am using a US 8 5 millimeter. These are my zings again. And here's what I have so far. So I did these, uh, did something a couple of weeks ago that I have wanted to do for such a long time but got frustrated and did not. So do you remember the w Wicked Mitts by Kristen of uh, the y Yarngas uh, yeah, the Yarngasm podcast? I created one, but then I ran out of yarn for the other. Well, I had done something on those mitts for the very first time, and I totally forgot to tell you guys, and I did it on one of my hats too. I did a tub tubular cast on, and I am so excited how pretty is that guys? I love it. So <laughs> I've been wanting to do a tubular cast on forever because it just makes it look so nice. It just finishes it off so well. So I have looked everywhere on YouTube. There are so many tutorials on how to do it. Um, Stacy from Very Pink Knits has uh, some tutorials how to do it. Um, there is many others. However, there are several ways to do it. One of the ways, um, and I think this is the way Stacy does it, uh, is a provisional cast on. I have done the provisional cast on. I don't mind it, but I really don't like doing it. So um, there's that one. And then there's another one where you're just, um, so you're holding your needles and you're just like looping over, similar to Judy's magic cast on or a Turkish cast on, something like that. Not quite, but there's that way. It's just the way that you're doing it. And I couldn't figure it out. I tried several times and I just got frustrated and stopped. However, I searched it again thinking there must be another way and I end up finding one on Interweave, uh, Interweave's channel on YouTube and I will 
try to link it below but they have a wonderful uh, tutorial on how to do a tubular cast on and how it's done is uh, perfect I thought you take scrap yarn and you cast on half your stitches so say I needed to cast on 80 stitches I cast on 40 stitches with scrap yarn I knit about four rows and then ending on a knit side I take that say this yarn do a purl row knit three more rows and then once you get back to the purl side of things you're you're gonna see like your little loop that you made with this yarn and you're going to so the scrap yarn sorry I'm bad at explaining things you're gonna see your scrap yarn and then you're gonna see that loop of this yarn where you first started it so you're going to like knit a stitch and then you're going to pick one of those stitches up and purl it something like that watch the video you will see but I was like oh my god that is so easy so I tried it and it worked you get your 80 stitches per se and you just take out the scrap yarn and you have a tubular cast on so it was so simple and I was so super excited that I finally did it so yeah now I want to pretty much do a tubular cast on on everything yeah there's some few a few extra steps there to it but I think it's totally worth it because it makes it look so nice so anyways that was a total sidebar, but yeah. <laughs> Tubular cast on. I end up doing a one by one rib. Can't remember if that's what it called for in the pattern, but that's what I did. And now I'm starting into the seed stitch part of it. And I am loving the way it's working up. It's really nice. So um, I don't have the ball band with me, but this is the Knit Picks uh, City Tweed, which is... Um, it is a wool blend and it feels really nice. So yeah, there we go. So I will link the pattern below. It is a free pattern on Rivalry. So yeah, totally love it. And then I just got one of my cute little stitch markers here. It's a little dolphin. So yeah, there we go. So there's that and the next thing, what do I have? Okay, so the next thing I've been working on is another baby blanket. So I decided to uh, knit this one. Now for this, I had gotten um, two balls, oops, I'm dropping things, two balls of uh, Karen baby cakes. So I just picked these up at Michael's. And this is in the Citrus Delicious colorway. So hopefully that's not going to blow out. Um, okay, it's totally blowing out. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so it's these yellows and whites and minty green. So I got two balls of this. Each of these skeins have 231 yards. So I wanted to make the yarn go as far as possible. So I decided that rather than crocheting it, because crochet does take um, more yarn than knitting, I was going to knit, knit it instead. So I'm using my six millimeter Knitter's Pride Zings for this. And pretty much all I'm doing is uh, the dishcloth pattern. <laughs> so PJ Allen's dishcloth pattern I am actually doing the one with the holes this time though. So I just cast it on like that and I am increasing up to the center which I've already done. Um, I think I have like a hundred and two stitches on here. can't remember. I finished my, I did four plain rows of knitting and now I've I'm on to my decrease side so yeah 
I think that it, yes, that's a dishcloth pattern, but it turns out into a very beautiful garter stitch blanket. And that's because it's got the eyelets. It looks even more pretty. So I figured I wanted to do this pattern because one, it's super simple. It's mindless. It's plain garter. It's nice and squishy because it's garter and I'm using such a big needle. So it's even more squishy and drapey. <laughs> so yeah, because I had two balls of it, I wanted to make the most out of the yarn. So I figured I would use one ball to do the increases, which I have done. I have this much left. So I probably could have increased this blanket up a little bit further, but I didn't want to push my luck. I didn't want to use too much and run out. So still got that much of the first ball left. So I'm probably going to do a couple more rows of decrease and then I'm going to start into my second ball. So this ball will finish the blanket off on the decrease side. So I thought that was the best way to go about it. That's what I wanted to do anyways. So yeah, I love it. Sorry for the clinging. It is turning out really, really nice. And it is going to be of fair size as well. So it is really pretty. And it's so super soft. I really love this yarn. And yeah, I love it. Really nice. So I'm going to get this one finished. This doesn't take a long at all, guys. Uh, for what I have knit here... Um, this is, I don't know, six hours of knitting, maybe seven. I did this, I went outside one morning with my tea and by mid afternoon I had gotten to this point. So it's, it's, it flies, it goes pretty fast, which is what I wanted. So yeah, really nice. I really like that. So Yes, there is that one. So let me see, what do I have left to share with you? Okay, so I'm just going to share two more things with you, and that will be all. So this is another Me Made project bag. My kitty cats. So I had showed you my uh, half-finished object, my sock. Well, I cast it on the second one because if I don't, then it might never get casted on. So I'm just going to share with you quickly. It's not much at all, guys. So here is what I have started so far. So I cast it on 64 stitches, 2x2 two two ribbing on my 2.0s. And yeah. Now I'm going to do my decrease round to get it back down to 56 stitches and then knit the rest of it. So this is my second Rita sock by Danielle George. So yeah, not much at all done on it, but <laughs> I just thought I would share that. So there's that. These, um, it's not priority knitting right now, so I'm kind of just working on it when I I feel the need for something fingering weight because a lot of the stuff as you see that I'm working on is is not fingering weight and it's not it's not for me either it's all for market so well besides the saunders shawl um so I kind of need to mix something in there that I'm I'm doing for myself or I really enjoy doing just to mix it up or I go crazy <laughs> so it's not getting ton of love but it's getting some so that's what I have done so far on that and then the last thing I have to share with you another me made project bag um, is my another dishcloth and I don't have a lot done on this but there's the start of it it's just like a brown one Bennett Handicrafter Cotton. So, yeah. That's that. Nothing too exciting, but... 
that's what I've been working on. And yeah, that's it for works in progress. So the only thing I have left is um, a, a little bit of sewing and that will be all. So um, if you're not interested in the sewing segment, thank you for tuning into the podcast. It was amazing having you. And yeah, I will see you next week. But if you're interested in the sewing, I will continue. So I did a little bit more sewing in the past couple of weeks. I've still been having a lot of fun with it and learning so very much. Um, so I have in total made four things four more bags. Two of them I do not have with me, sadly. Um, I made them as uh, gifts for Kaylee, so they're not here, but I will um, share what I do have. So the first thing um, I have to share with you is a project bag. So what I have been doing is I've been going between the squishy project bag tutorial um, it's um, Confessions of a Homeschooler is her website. She has a channel here on YouTube as well with some uh, tutorials on it. I've done her project bag. I've done another type of project bag. Um, I've been watching uh, In a Pickle Knitting. Um, I've been watching her wonderful tutorial. She has a bag tutorial um, as well. So I've been... I've been trying all these patterns and learning all the ways to make a project bag and all the techniques and stuff. So this project bag is kind of a mashup of all, all the things. So I'm learning what I like to do. I'm learning what I like in a bag and I'm, I kind of just made something of my own here. So it is a zippered bag. And I put a, a strap on it. So this is just some material that I got from uh, Walmart. And then this is one of my fabrics I got from Fabricville. And I really love this. So it is a box bottom bag. But what I really love about this bag. Uh, I have it lined inside. So. Yeah. Yeah. What I really love about this bag is uh, if you watch, uh, I want to say her name is Diane, and if it's not, I'm so sorry, but she's in a pickle knitting here on YouTube. I watched her bag tutorial, and I want to make her bag. I just haven't found the, um, the nerve to do it yet, um, but I did want to learn how to put a zipper inside my bags, so I followed her tutorial on like how to make her bag, but I just did this part of it. And I did it, guys. It's not that bad. Uh, it's a little intimidating at first, but um, it's not that bad. So I put an inside zipper in my bag, and I just got like a, a cream linen inside. And oh my gosh, I love it. It turned out so good. And yeah. I almost don't want to give this bag away now because I love it so much. But super happy about that. And yeah, I love the way that it turned out. The only thing um, I wish I had done differently is uh, there's, you can put like zipper tabs on your, your bag. So you put like a piece of fabric on this and sew it over. So it kind of has like a tag or a tab on each end. I find that it just has a nicer finish to the bag and I wish I had done that, but that's okay. I'm just learning. So I think that's one of the things I like. So I'm going to try it next, but regardless, um, this might be going to market or I might be keeping it. I don't know yet. <laughs> so there's one of the things I made. The next thing I made, I just finished yesterday. I did a little bit of sewing and it's just um, a boxed uh, makeup bag. So I had made one of these for Kaylee in some different fabric. But yeah, this is a tutorial on YouTube, which I will try to link as well. 
So, yeah, it is seamed. And there are several uh, videos on YouTube how to make this bag. But um, when I searched, I put no raw seams because there's nothing wrong with it. I know you can make them look uh, neat and nice, but I just like the finished look <laughs> with no seams. So I found a tutorial that actually shows you how to do that. So this has no raw edges. So it turned out really nice. I do like it. And yeah. Again, I don't want to depart with this. <laughs> I love it. But anyways, um, I love making this bag. I think this would actually make a great notions pouch. So if I was to keep this one or make one for myself, I would probably uh, use this to put all my DPNs in and my knitting tools and stuff like that. Because right now I have them in a pencil case. And a problem I'm finding with that is that the um, lid like the closure keeps snapping up on it and I'm so afraid that it's like one day it's just gonna fall over and dump all over the place so I would rather it be in something like this where you just unzip it it's safe so if it falls it's not gonna go all over and you're gonna be able to get all your stuff so anyways I think it could be used for both purposes so I love it it's <laughs> It's easy to make. The only thing I find finicky is the ends because you have like four corners on each end of the bag that you have to box off. And oh, it's a little finicky, but uh, it, it, it happens. <laughs> so yeah, it was fun to make. So I made another one of these for Keely. And because I still have leftover um, uh, fabric from... Um, these projects, um, I had enough to make a pouch. Um, so it was, a, I think I made it like a, a 10 by eight pouch. It was a zippered one. It didn't have, it had the lining inside, but it didn't have a zipper inside. Um, but it was just a simple pouch, no box bottom. Um, so yeah, I had enough fabric to make one of those. So I made one of those for her. So, yeah, I've been having lots of fun with the sewing. I have, um, do I have, no, I don't have no new fabric to share with you guys this week. Thank you for the wonderful comments. A lot of people liked, uh, the fabric that I shared last week. You will definitely be seeing more, um, maybe on our trip to PI, there might be some more coming from there. I don't know. Hope so. Um, but yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Um, I would definitely like to make some more project bags and pouches probably for uh, market. Don't know about these. Probably be a good idea because everybody loves making bags, but I don't know. They're, they take a little bit more time and I honestly don't have that much time left. The market's coming up on the 9th of June. So I'm kind of in a, a mad dash and I'm a little stressed just a little stressed because it's my first market and yeah I don't know so we'll, we we will see but um yeah having lots of fun I'm thinking that um I would like to start making bags uh to uh sell but I would also like to start making garments as well I would love to make some garments for myself because um, we all have like a favorite shirt or a favorite tank, something like that. And the stores don't always sell what you like, right? So especially me being a bigger girl, um, there's only so much uh, in the curvy plus size section and um, they don't always do like the most prettiest patterns or designs or they just don't make something that you feel is to your taste or it doesn't look very flattering on you um or if you do find something then they don't have it in a, in a range of colors that you like whatever so i i want to kind to learn how to do it myself and um make some garments for myself um 
and I'd also like to make some children's stuff and baby stuff. I think if I did go down that road, I would probably try to make some baby clothes first just because they are a smaller project and might be a little easier for me to learn on first. So those are probably some things that might be happening in the future, or at least I would like them to. So yeah, I would like to stay acquainted with my sewing machine. Um, so yeah, we will see. So anyways, guys, this podcast has now gone over an hour. <laughs> so I should probably let you guys go. Um, like I said, I don't have nothing for stash this week. I did buy a bunch of cotton, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Like I said, I will just probably knit it up and there, there will definitely be a podcast before market. So you guys will see it. Um, but yeah, so I will try to definitely get some pictures of our trip and I will try to do some vlogs of the yarn shop and the trip as well so you can see Prince Edward Island is so beautiful so yeah I will definitely be sure to share that with you guys so um yeah be sure to uh, follow me on Instagram because I do post there um the most and head on over to our our rivalry group for the show notes where you can find direct links to everything I've talked about today and um, do introduce yourself share what you've been making because I would love to see that and I would love to hear from you guys as well and don't forget to enter into our giveaway for the Chrissy shawl as well so yeah lots of fun stuff have a great and crafty week and my camera cut off again. I hope you have a great and crafty week and I will see you next week for sure. So until next time, guys, happy knitting. Bye.